tensions in relations between US and Iran has spiked to an unprecedented level after drone attacks on Saudi Arabia's Aramco Ebkik facility viewers may note that it's the world's largest petroleum processing plant the US president stated in Twitter Saudi Arabia oil supply was attacked there's reason to believe that we know the culprit are locked and loaded depending on verification but are waiting to hear from the kingdom as to who they believe was the cause of the attack and under what terms we would proceed the attacks disrupted more than half of Saudi Arabia's oil output and will affect global supplies Yemen's Iran lined Houthi rebel group claimed responsibility for it US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo claimed that Iran was responsible and accused it of an unprecedented attack on the world's energy supply Iran has denied its involvement and Iranian officials have warned that the US military assets in the region were within strike range of its missiles the Iranian Foreign Minister Javed Zarif wrote on Twitter having failed at max pressure Pompeo is turning to max deceit in this video defense updates analyzes why Iran will be decimated in a war against the US let's get started this video is sponsored by war thunder if you are like us fascinated by military vehicles and technology I recommend you give war thunder a try it's a military vehicle combat game which you can download and play for free on PC PlayStation 4 and Xbox one with cross-platform support it has a huge variety of more than 1200 playable aircraft tanks helicopters and ships from the 1930s to the 1990s which you can take to battle on land in the air and at sea on more than 80 theaters of war war thunder has been kind enough to offer all defense updates viewers a special bonus which will grant you a free premium tank aircraft or ship and three days of premium account time for registering using our link in the description below so take the plunge and join more than 20 million players from around the world Iranian Navy has about 400 vessels though the quantity may not seem bad the quality leaves a lot to be desired Iranian Navy is considered a brown water Navy and operates mainly within the 50 kilometer exclusion zone a large percent of the fleet is made up of small patrol vessels apart from which there's a small submarines force some frigates and a few corvettes the most potent submarine in the fleet is the Russian diesel electric kilo class which displaces around 2325 tons Iran has three of these the other submarines are much smaller than these and none of these submarines are nuclear powered this submarine force is nowhere close to what the US brings to the table it has 17 Virginia class 32 Los Angeles class submarines 3 C sea wolf class attack subs in active service apart from 18 Ohio class ballistic missile submarines all of these are nuclear powered and have a displacement in upwards of 6,000 tons and technologically far superior it neither has a destroyer nor an aircraft carrier there are six frigates and three corvettes the most powerful of these is the Sahand class that displaces around 2,000 tons these are no match to the advanced US surface combatants America has 66 Arleigh Burke class destroyers and 22 Ticonderoga class cruisers in active service these displace more than 8,000 tons and are multi-role warships capable of anti-aircraft warfare AAW anti-submarine warfare ASW anti-surface warfare ASUW and ballistic missile defense BMD US Navy is expected to dominate and should be able to impose a naval blockade on paper the Iranian Air Force possesses more than 300 combat capable aircraft but all of them are either third generation or fourth generation ones there are around 190 fighter aircraft such as US made Northrop f5s f4 Phantom 2 Grumman F-14 and Russian made Sukhoi Su-22 Sukhoi Su-24 and MiG-29 the MiG-29 is the most modern fighter and Iran operates approximately only 25 of these the air-to-air -air missiles equipping fighters are far older in technology compared to what the US possesses 
F-22 and F-35 are a generation ahead of MiG-29 and are stealthy. In this scenario, the Iranian pilots will find it difficult to detect and target them. The U.S. with far sophisticated fighters, coupled with way better pilot training and aerial strategy, is expected to quickly get air superiority over Iranian skies. Iran has 525,000 active personnel and around 350,000 in reserves. Iran's military reportedly has 1,600 tanks. This includes some 100 locally produced Zulfikar, about 100 very old British-made Chieftain, around 200 US-made M60 Patton, as well as around 1,000 T-72 tanks of different variants. Technically, the T-72 is the best of the lot. Viewers may note that in 1991 Gulf War and in 2003 during the invasion of Iraq, the T-72s were quickly swept aside by American M1 Abrams and British Challenger II. Tehran is also thought to possess around 2,300 armored fighting vehicles, around 550 self-propelled artillery, around 2,150 towed artillery pieces, and approximately 2,000 rocket projectors. While the equipment is available in decent numbers, almost all of these are technically far less competent when compared to American counterparts. A ground invasion will be bloody, but American forces will be able to make quick inroads. Iran has approximately 1,000 strategic missiles that are controlled by the Revolutionary Guard. It consists of 300 short-range ballistic missiles, including Iranian-made Shahab-1, Scud-B, Shahab-2, Scud-C, as well as Tandar-69, CSS-8. It also has domestically produced Shahab-3 strategic intermediate-range ballistic missiles, IRBM, with a reported range of up to 1,000 kilometers. The Ghadir-1, with an estimated 1,600-kilometer range, and a Shahab-3 variant known as Sajil-2 with a reported range of up to 2,400 kilometers. These can't reach the American mainland, but these do represent a significant threat for American allies like Israel. But the reliability of these missiles are suspect. None have nuclear warheads and all of them are land-based, which makes them inherently vulnerable to a preemptive strike. A diverse array of surface-to-air missiles are deployed to protect these sites but none have the capability to detect, track, and engage American stealth aircraft like B-2 Spirit and F-22 Raptor. The U.S. is expected to quickly neutralize these sites with air and sea-launched precision strikes. Iran nuclear deal involved the United Kingdom, Russia, France, China, Germany, and the European Union, apart from the U.S. and Iran. None of these stakeholders have favored the unilateral withdrawal of the U.S. from the deal. Diplomatic negotiations are still underway, but it can be said that in case the U.S. pursues any military action against Iran, there won't be major pushback apart from diplomatic saber-rattling. If we look from Iran's perspective, it's most likely that these stakeholders will be bystanders at the very best or even support the U.S. in the worst case. It's also been seen that NATO as a whole has been able to keep aside the difference in the past and there's no possibility of it actively opposing the U.S. In this situation, it can be said that Iran will not find any ally which will genuinely support it in case a conflict gets started. Furthermore, it may have to face aggressive maneuver from Israel and Saudi Arabia. Iran and Israel have been longtime rivals and several incidents during the current Syrian civil war has strained the relations further. Iran and Saudi Arabia have no diplomatic relations since an attack on the Saudi embassy in Tehran in January 2016. Bilateral relations between the countries have always been strained due to several geopolitical issues like the difference in oil export policy. On May 13, Saudi Arabia said two of its oil tankers were attacked while sailing toward the Persian Gulf. As reported in one case, an unknown object seems to have torn a hole into the hull of the tanker. While Saudi Arabia didn't directly accuse Iran, things could heat up quickly if sabotage by Iran is proven. In 
A war effort requires massive reserves, not only in men, but also in material. American annual military budget is around 50 times that of Iran. Napoleon is known to have said, an army marches on its stomach. In August last year, the Trump administration slapped sanctions on Iran, which has adversely affected its economy. The sanctions have been expanded to include a ban on Iran's oil exports, which is its major source of foreign revenue inflow. More than 150 foreign corporations have stopped doing business with Iran, and many countries like India and Japan have reduced oil imports and may eventually stop buying completely. The economic squeeze has resulted in a severe crunch. The Iranian currency Rial lost more than 60% of its value against the dollar last year, and inflation is predicted to reach 40% this year. The economy shrank by as much as 3.9% last year, and as per the International Monetary Fund, it could nosedive by another 6% this year. Keeping this in view, it will not be possible for Iran to fight a sustained war against the most well-funded military in the world. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.